Welcome to The Compressor Guru. Friends, this is a different kind of episode. We're not going to rebuild or repair anything today, but this is a very important episode. So please, watch it all and take heed. So, while I talk, I put some pictures up here of compressors that have ruptured, that the tanks have let loose, and... There's some pictures of the aftermath of the buildings that they've blown apart in and just different compressors that have blown up. That's what this video is about today. The information in this episode may literally save your life. I was surfing around YouTube like many of you and uh, something that started coming up in my feed was guys fixing their air tanks. There were some guys that were welding, and one guy actually used JB Weld. Don't do that. Let's talk theory. An air tank is what would best be described as an energy storage unit. This is a battery for air. Uh, let's think about it this way. An 80-gallon tank with a 5-horse Two-stage compressor takes about eight minutes for, for the compressor to pump from zero to 175. And this is actually a measure of the energy that is stored in the tank. So, question, how much work would a five-horsepower motor do in eight minutes? Instead of a compressor, say, put a big saw blade on that motor, how much would could you cut in eight minutes? If you had a grinding blade, how much metal, tin, wire, anything strong or simply hard to break, could you grind, cut, th dismantle by hand? How much stuff could that five horsepower motor destroy in eight minutes? Okay, back to the air tank. You have 175 pounds in that air tank. Let's do some math. So we have our five horse two stage compressor and we've already established it takes eight minutes to pump from zero to 175. Let's uh, figure the area of the inside of that tank. Uh, the tank I have here in the shop is a two foot diameter. And from weld to weld, not counting the ends, it's 33 inches. <clears throat> now, for this purpose right here, we're not going to try to figure the uh, ends being rounded. I'm just going to figure them flat. So the formula is the area equals 2 pi r h so radius times height plus 2 pi r radius squared. So 2 pi uh times 12 times 33 gives us the uh inside area of the cylinder plus the ends which is 2 pi 144 because 12 squared is 144. you now have 240 2486 plus 904 so the total square inches of the inside of that tank is at least 3,390 square inches. We take and we continue that and we look at our pressure, which was 175. Our pressure uh, times our square inches, we have a grand total of at least 593,250 pounds of stored energy. I have included some clips in the description of tanks exploding. How can you take steps to protect yourself? Because I don't want you guys to be a victim. Or You've got all this pressure stored in a tank. Don't weld on that tank. Do not fix it with a JB weld. But here's what you can do to help yourself. One, only buy tanks that have a certified tag on the tank. Two, if you buy a used machine, 
make sure it has a certification tag. Let's look at what is all on this tag and what it means. At the top, you'll have the number uh, that was assigned to the tank uh, by the whoever certified it. This one is 121.95.08, and it was certified by Manchester Tank. They're also the, uh, they were probably the builder, and they're out of Illinois. Uh, MAWP, that's Maximum Working Pressure. And that, this tank is 200 PSI. Now, they are certain that, that tank is safe at 200 PSI, clear up to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. So if your tank has been in a fire and it's got all the paint burned off, hydro test it, please, before you put this machine back to work. Uh, the next relevant numbers, uh, by the way, we, we have... Uh, some more numbers that have to do with temperature and your maximum working pressure. Negative uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 PSI. Uh, the next real important number is the year. It, sometimes they'll type year out. This one just says YR. Manufactured date on this uh, tank was 2011. And the... Uh, next thing you want to look for is the size of your tank. It says gallons 80, and some tanks will have a radius uh, stamped on them, and the radiuses on a lot of the Ingersolls were, if it's a 30-gallon tank, it'll say uh, R-A-D-F. would be a 30, a 60 was a C, 80 was a D, uh, 120 was an E. I don't know if there was a, I don't know if they had a code for the 200 or not, but you can find the size of your uh, tank right here. And so the size of your tank, the maximum working pressure, and the year of manufacture, your three really big ones that you want to look at here. We have another tag from... Uh, a customer in Texas, he's rebuilding an old uh, Ingersoll 242, and uh, it is a 200, uh, it just says WP, 200, that's your 200 pound working pressure, and it looks like it was at 450 degrees, and our year was 1961, and I told the customer, uh, that I recommended he have this hydro tested before he puts pressure back in it. I cannot see on this old rusty tag the tank size. RAD. Can't quite make it out. <laughs> anyway, so uh, RD would be your radius, and it looks like it's 21. So this would be a horizontal tank. And that would be an 80-gallon. Uh, some of this uh, it depends on the manufacturer of the tank. It depends on the manufacturer that bought the tank. And uh, so your radius, you'll have varying stories on it, but you're, you'll always have your year and your maximum working pressure. So uh, this is super important, guys. Take a look at your tag. If you don't have a tag... I will not pump a tank up in my shop that is not a certified tank. Uh, I used to do it, and when I would have a little compressor come in for repair, I would literally turn the machine on. I would walk outside and wait till I heard it shut down before I walked back in. I, I've, I don't want to risk my life. I don't want to risk my blood and my life on not trusting these tanks, and I recommend you don't either. Number three, if your tank is over 20 years old, at least inspect the tank uh, by pulling a two-inch plug and putting a camera in and uh, look for excessive rust on the bottom of the tank. Four, if your tank is over 40 years old, have it hydro-tested. 
I've included a link to Vintage Machine, the old guy there, and I probably shouldn't call him old, he's probably younger than I am, but Vintage Machinery, the guy there, he does a great job of demonstrating and explaining hydro testing. Number five, which should be number one in a maintenance video, drain your tank daily. If that is a problem, we sell electric auto tank drains. They can be set. You can drain them for a couple seconds or a couple minutes every so many minutes. You know, you can you can drain them for two seconds every five minutes, or you can drain them for one second every 20 minutes, or you can drain them for 15 seconds every half hour. There's, all, there's two different settings, and you can set it up all kinds of different ways. Number six, super important, have a safety valve with the same rating as the certification tag on your tank says. Number seven, have a working gauge on your tank. The safety valve and the gauge are required by every inspector that may look at your tank. So have them on there, protect yourself, and know what air's in that tank. Number eight, if your tank is mounted on a pallet, make sure the bolts in the legs are a little loose. You say loose? Why loose? Well, wood expands and contracts with moisture. And you're going to say, that won't ever hurt the tank. I have personally seen a leg on an 80-gallon upright tank break from being bolted tight to a, uh, to a pallet and left, and it was in a body shop. And these guys, like every body shop, will rinse the floor off every now and then, do everything they can to get the dust out, and, you know, they'll turn the heat up to dry paint in the car, and sure enough, that uh, pallet got wet and would dry, and it broke a leg on an 80-gallon upright tank. So instead of leaving it on the pallet, what to do is uh, mount it on uh, the appropriate number of pads like you see here. This is actually 4 inches by 4 inches. And there's a rubber uh, anti-skid material on each side, and there's a rubber core in the middle. It's blue, and you can bolt your compressor you drill right through this into the floor and put your lag in. This will keep your compressor lagged to the floor and not vibrate through the entire building and make the noise go everywhere like it will if you just bolt it straight to the floor with no vibration pad between the leg and the cement. Uh, there's solutions to all this stuff, guys. Uh, drains, auto drains, uh, anti-vibration pads, uh, inspect your tank drain your tank daily guys this video is literally all about safety don't if you got a pinhole in your tank don't try to weld it you are literally taking your life in your hands and i i don't want i don't want to read about you in the newspaper i don't want to see a video on youtube of you blowing up and those are in the description guys you have a great day god bless you uh, stay safe and, you know, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. There will be a new uh, video out in a couple weeks. Go check the channel out. Look at some of the older videos. Thank you. Have a great day.